We could draw a line from Bizet to Stravinsky to Astor Piazzolla via maybe Ginastera, another wonderful Argentinian composer, and he is the master of the tango, never met one he didn't like, and composed a vast number. We hear the end of Tangazzo. He's a bandoneon player and has his own little group, and composers are going to start to do this. Want to get your music out there? Do it yourself. Of course, that's been happening in jazz, and we'll find it happening a lot more. As we've already seen, television and movies provide tremendous opportunities for composers. Here are two composers associated with Batman, uh, the original series, the Paradistic series back in the 1960s, the first being Nelson Riddle, who did a lot of the early through lines, the soundtracks, and then Neil Hefty, who did the theme song, which is, by the way, a 12-bar blues with dissonant seconds and chromaticism, and Nelson Riddle developing theme songs for each of the villains. And so over the course of a year or two, one gets familiar with these recurring light motifs. In the middle, the other Bernstein, Leonard Bernstein, sometimes was called the East Coast Bernstein, and Elmer Bernstein, the West Coast, and he was associated with Hollywood movies, including a little bit of Orientalism with the Ten Commandments and the orgy around the golden calf. Adios, amigos. See you in court. avant-garde also continues in its merry way, and sometimes there are crossovers with to more mainstream audiences. Xenakis, not so much. He fought in World War II, the Greek revolutionary struggle, uh, left with terrible scars, but fights the good fight nonetheless, trained as an architect. And so his music has all sorts of mathematical correspondences. Once again, he called it stochastic music, and you'll see with this graphic score, graphic scores going back at least to Stravinsky's cut scores, which we did see. We didn't see it with the flood, but we did see it with Requiem Canticles. Certainly, Cage had his graphic scores, and now you'll see another one where the lines, uh, glissandos, uh, go up and down from a certain point. You also have that in Ligeti. Georgie Ligeti interviewed his son at one point, and his son's name is Lucas Ligeti. Nice guy, also a composer working in rock and roll and avant-garde classical music. And Ligeti himself really makes a splash by the usage of four of his pieces, not particularly by his permission, but made him much more famous in, once again, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. You'll hear brief excerpts from Atmospheres, uh, seeing the original notation, and then part of his Requiem, a very different Requiem, with, again, masses of sound from instruments and voices. Not at all electronic until you get the Kubrick-added siren 
alert as the monolith first encounters the light of day after being buried for so long. The sense of time and place, even when one is outside doing a potentially dangerous water droplets, what's in them, drizzle. And that time and place can be found in Paul Desmond's Take Five, his work with the Dave Brubeck Band. They're both locals out of San Francisco and Concord, California. How local can you get? And the interest in cool jazz and the asymmetrical uh, time signatures that go back to such composers as Tchaikovsky evoking Russian folk music, etc. You also hear it in another uh, composer evoking cool jazz, and that would be Henry Mancini with his theme for the Pink Panther, parallel fifths, chromaticism, all quite delightful. That sense of place and time are so important for film composers. Take the example of Lyon-born French composer Maurice Jarre, who tropes, as we saw in Max Steiner, the music of any local culture wherein the film is set. That would include in Lawrence of Arabia, where you have soaring pseudo-Arabic music set against the British Empire of the First World War, or, unless it's that First World War, uh, or back in France, occupied France during World War II, the Nazis stealing paintings to head back to Germany at the end of the war, or Dr. Zhivago with its evocations of Russian Orthodox chant set against the sound effects of the pounding of the hammers on poor orphan Yuri's mother's coffin, and then, as he looks up into the sky, a hit single. That would be Laura's theme. This is a, this is a woman he won't meet for years. <laughs> These on the station platform by tomorrow morning, crated and ready to be loaded aboard the train.
vessel is shattered, voiceless, motionless, dead. Committing which unto the grave, let us beseech the Lord that he will give you. Filmmaker Stanley Kubrick utilized bona fide avant-garde concert music for his films. It was only a matter of time before film composers rise to the occasion with their own avant-garde works, as you well hear in Leonard Rosenman's score to the rather interior action adventure, The Fantastic Voyage, taking place within the human body. Ah! Give me your widest beam. Full power. The ship's finished. We'll have to get out on our own. Is there a quick way out? What about Dr. Michaels? White corpuscles. We've got to get them out. They'll ingest the ship and everything in it. Stay here, both of you. Hold them off if you can. Berserk. Berserk, nothing. Run out, get me out. Get this on, quick. If a window blows, we'll lose this airlock. Help, I'm trapped. Help me. Go get my... Go get my hands, huh? Get me out of here. I... My hands are trapped. Come on. Come on, my hands. I can't move my... Come on, man. This is coming with my ass. Get me out! Get me out of here! Get me out! 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 Get me in the concert halls, where Luciano Berrio tropes everything under the sun in an overall framework of Mahler's Second Symphony, the Second Scherzo. And it's a case of word association football. Whenever certain motifs in Mahler remind him of other pieces, he just 
gets that idea out, all in counterpoint with the Swingle Singers, an avant-garde jazz group. Kind of cool in its own way. Oh, my God. 